and beautiful, all things wise and wonderful. We thank you for the wisdom and love that you have planted within your creatures, especially those today of four legs. God, we praise you and thank you for cats, dogs, and all kinds of pets that we have that remind us of your great love. Thank you for what you've done in them and how that, oh God, you minister to us. May we take care of them as your gifts. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. So animals and music, is there anything better? I don't think so. Tony, show them your shirt. All dogs go to heaven. That? Oh, oh, all right, well, that song. Um, do you have your sheets of all things bright and beautiful? We're going to sing All Things Bright and Beautiful, a wonderful song, and I think the words are just perfect for today. Thanks, Ash. talking about Winnie the Pooh and Heffalum. So <laughs> I've got an outline on things that uh, I really want to share with you and reasons that I became a vet and reasons that uh, I love animals so much in my Christian life. I became a vet. I don't know that decision when I decided I wanted to be a vet. I just, it just happened. It's just something I kind of grew into. Some people say my mother whispered in my ear every night, you're going to be a vet and take care of my animals. So I ended up just, that was the path I chose. 
it was uh, never a question mark of how or when or what, but uh, that was the path I chose. I want to tell you a little bit about winter. Okay. Yeah. Winter. I just lost my um, really favorite best friend. Uh, his name was Wacky. Just uh, two months ago, he had bone cancer. He was a dog retriever, and uh, he was only ten years old. But we were very close. And after we lost uh, Susan, and I have kind of always had goldens growing up. And after we lost him. Uh, we pretty much didn't want to get one right away. We wanted to kind of wait. And so this one came into my office, um, and she walked in, and I knew she was a rescue. They had already kind of told me about her, and I was kind of one of those like you are when you see a stray or a dog that's homeless. You're like, I don't, I don't see you. Uh, you're not here. And uh, so anyway, we treated her. She is... Um, has been to four different homes. And uh, she was uh, has epilepsy, she has hypothyroid disease, and she has probably one of the worst backs I've ever seen on the x-ray. And she's on a lot of medicines, and because of her epilepsy, a lot of the people that tried to um, keep her just couldn't. And so uh, I said, well, I'll take her home for the night and see how it works, and well, now she's my dog. I go home and first thing I say is, uh, are you my doggy? And yeah, she is. She has in two weeks, we've only had her two weeks, she has wormed her way into our hearts in a way that I just um, can't explain. You know, we just sang the song, All Things Bright and Beautiful. One of my favorite books, series, is by James Harriet, And the titles of his book are the... Uh, the refrain of what we uh, talked about with, um, sang about this just a little while ago. Um, these books are very, if y'all haven't read them, they're nice, light reading, and they talk about a country vet in the Yorkshire um, area of England, and they're just wonderful stories. And I read them when I was young, and I've reread them since, and it's kind of like uh, another Bible to my life and everything. Um, you know, dogs in the Bible are not really um, seen as a good thing. Uh, it's kind of a, um, it's, if you call somebody a dog in the Bible, it's kind of a, not a good term. Uh, they were kind of like the wolf, they were scavengers. Cats in the Bible, they were idols in the Egyptian world. They actually, believe it or not, worshiped cats. I think that's why some cats are spiteful is because they, after they were worshipped as idols, they got relegated to just being a pet. And, um, but anyway, they really aren't mentioned in the Bible, are they? We don't hear a lot about companion or animals that are domesticated. I think today, if there was a Noah's Ark, it would be the most complicated decision that Moses would have to make. Not only would he have to get a dog and a cat, but he would have to decide on labradoodles or Aussie doodles or golden doodles or everything. I think it would be very complicated for Noah uh, if he were to make an ark at this time. Pets in my Christian life, What? how do they help me? We know that pets are our family members. I know all of you here don't think that your dog is just a dog. It is a part of your family. It's a part of your life. They give you constant companionship. They give you comfort, especially in this COVID-19 time when we've had to worry and some of us have been homebound. Uh, they are there for us. We, Some of us have found a, a new bond with our pets because of this um, uh, uh, being in the pandemic. We know about the service dog um, bond that they have with people with disabilities, people with blindness that are crippled, wheelchair bound, um, people that have mental health issues. We know about prison reform. Some of these dogs come in and they're a big part of the prisoners and uh, uh, how they reform back to a uh, normal life. And I want to tell you a story, and some of you heard this before, but when I was a kid, everything was about animals, right? So when I was in Sunday school, and I was being told the stories of Jesus, I always kind of imagined, why didn't Jesus have a dog? 
Why didn't he have a dog? Everybody has a dog, right? All the, all the nice, friendly people, they have dogs. And so my imagination runs wild. And you know, I thought if Jesus had a dog, it would have been so neat. That dog would have been with him at the temple when Jesus was going to listen to the, uh, the priest and all the elders talk about uh, the, the Bible. And uh, the dog would have been with him there. I think about um, uh, when uh, Jesus was feeding the multitudes, and he and he took the five loaves of bread and the five fish, and he and he made all this food to feed the four or five thousand. And he had leftovers, and how happy the dog would be—the first sign of leftovers in the uh, in the Bible time. I think about when um, Jesus was walking on water, and Peter had to have that faith to walk on water with him. And when he found his faith slipping, he slowly sank. Well, I have no doubt that the dog that was walking with Jesus would have been walking on top of the water the whole time and because of the faith of his master. And I think about the Last Supper. I was always the kid, whenever I saw a picture of the Last Supper, I always, to this day, I still look under the table. I just think there's a dog there and that the disciples are sneaking him some of that communion feast there. But anyway, I, I imagine the dog would be there. And then on a more somber note, I know when his master was being tortured and crucified, that dog would never leave his side. I imagine the dog would be at the cross as, as so with Mary and Mary and John and, and, uh, and would have been laying there at the cross with his master that was suffering. But then, on the joyous note, the dog probably would have been laying at the tomb. And on the day of the resurrection, I can imagine the joy and happiness that dog found when his master returned. And then, finally, being able to walk with the disciples to continue, uh, the disciples continuing to start the new church. But I always imagine that. If Jesus had a dog, I think it would be like that. And that, to me, teaches us a lesson because I think the dog uh, is all about loyalty, obedience, devotion, faithfulness, and love, unconditional love. And shouldn't we be that way? As the dog would be to his master, Jesus, should we not be those faithful, devoted followers to Jesus ourselves, those messages that the dog can um learn to us. In Sunday school, we were talking a little bit about being the hands and feet and eyes and ears of Jesus. That's what he wants us to do in service to him. I kind of think of dogs and cats. They, they, um, we all have our unique gifts and how we are the hands and feet and eyes and ears. We have our unique gifts and voices. But I think dogs and cats have their unique gifts too. And um, they have the tail wag. Uh, they show us love. There's some wagon tails back there. And um, they wag their tails for us. Cats purr for us. They, these are gifts that God has given them. They show us love. They make us happy. Um, they show us faithfulness and devotion. If a lot of us have been sick or maybe you're hurting, and uh, these cats are by your side, they almost seem to know, don't they? They almost seem to know when you, you know, need companionship or faithfulness. I think that um, they're like doctors to us. Uh, we know for a fact they lower our blood pressures. They make us healthier. They make, they're like physical therapists. They encourage us to exercise. They make us healthier by doing that. They are stress relievers. They um, help with loneliness. They're our psychiatrists. And I know some of you may uh, deny this, but I know you talk to your dogs and cats and in a normal voice and you talk to them about all your troubles and everything that's going on and uh, and you you know they're listening. So I know they're like your, your uh, home psychiatrist. Um, they give us purpose in our life. They give a purpose to get up and feed them and take them out and um, and exercise with them and, and that kind of purpose. They make us better versions of who we can be. They make us better human beings, which is a part of our Christian life, I think. We want to be better people. They uh, make us the best we can be, better Christians. 
I know in my daily walks, I stumble, I fall, and find myself uh, distancing myself from God before I even know it. And uh, I need help. And a lot of you, my church, my Sunday school class, my friends, uh, help me get back on my feet. But I can't say enough about our pets and how they help us recover and c become closer to God. I really believe that. I think God, uh, dogs and cats just make life more fun. And I think the Christian life, even though it's a struggle, it is, it's hard, it's not necessarily the easy life, but I think God, dogs and cats and other pets, some people with horses and other pets, they make it easier uh, because we can learn so much from them. And then, you know, they only live a short time, and that's the hardest thing for me as a veterinarian is um, every day, really, I have to make decisions, help people make decisions on their pets. And it seems unfair. These wonderful creatures that give us so much and they only are with us a little over a decade or, or sometimes less, depending on the illness. And despite the heartbreak of losing a pet, I try to remind people of what a blessing they were in our life. I want to tell you a story about a uh, veterinarian. This is uh, from a veterinarian. And he um, had to put a family's dog to sleep. It was old, 15 years of age. And there was a six-year-old boy that was part of the family. And they were all in the room and they were talking about it and how hard it was. And one of the family members said that, um, you know, it's just so sad that they're only with us for a short time. And this six-year-old boy, um, kind of after the procedure was over, the six-year-old boy spoke up. And uh, he said, he said, I think I know why. He said, uh, and they all turned to him. They were startled because he really hasn't said much of anything. He said, people were born so that they can learn how to live a good life, like loving everybody all the time and being nice, right? Well, dogs already know how to do that, so they don't have to stay for as long as we do. And I want to, some of you have read this, but I want to share with you real quickly. If a dog was the teacher, you would learn things like, when your loved ones come home, always run to greet them. Never pass the opportunity for a joyride. Always allow the experience of fresh air and wind in your face to be pure ecstasy. Take naps, stretch before rising, run, romp, and play daily, thrive on attention, and let people touch you, which I know right now we're restricted on that. Avoid biting, a simple growl will do. On warm days, stop to lie on your back on the grass. On hot days, drink lots of water and lie on a shady tree. When you're happy, dance around and wag your entire body. We don't have tails, but you know, I know that bulldogs that don't have tails, and I know this one, he was so happy, he would wag his tail so hard and just fall over. <laughs> Delight in the simple joy of a long walk. Be faithful. Never pretend you're some, something you're not. If what you lie is buried, dig until you find it. When someone is having a bad day, be silent, sit close by, and nuzzle them gently. And I'm gonna add one more to that. If you see something stinky, don't roll in it, <laughs> but don't be afraid to get dirty and muddy and work in your garden or run through that mud puddle every now and then. The secret of happiness I think we can learn from a good dog. And I'll end with this. Everybody asks me, ask each other, do dogs go to heaven? It's the mystery. I don't know the answer to it. Robert Louis Stevenson has a quote. He said, dogs in heaven, I tell you, they will be there long before any of us. For me, if I am to imagine heaven as the most beautiful place, I can't imagine a heaven without dogs and cats and our wonderful pets. I can't imagine it without all of God's creation there. God has blessed us with these precious creatures and not just the ones here today, the ones you've had in the past, and the ones I am blessed with a new pet today I never thought I would have. And um, they, they just give us so much. So God bless all these pets. 
God bless my new dog, Winter, and uh, thank you very much. very much. Um, if you find out quickly when you come to be a new pastor of a church uh, who's well regarded within the community and those who take care of our loved ones rank high, do they not? And uh, so I heard a lot about Dr. B and uh, Kurt, thank you. Susan, thank you for the love you have for, for our loved ones. I want to thank uh, Carlene Hughes for putting this together. Thank you so much. We challenged our worship committee during COVID, let's have something outside. And so this was the idea that we came up with. Pam, thank you for the music. Ash, thank you, appreciate uh, that. Uh, and we wanna thank the, the, the city for letting us do this. I think there are signs that says no dogs or animals allowed on this area, but they allowed us to have this. So be sure to say thank you to them for letting us have this uh, time together. And uh, immediately following, this, that we're going to uh, have a blessing. Melanie will give instructions for that. But also remember that after we're kind of finished with the blessing, you can come over here and get pictures taken if you haven't done that. Jim Barker of the church will be glad to take those pictures and uh, send them to you. Uh, so thank you so much for coming. A lot of us don't know much about St. Francis of Assisi except for the prayer that we pray, make me an instrument of thy peace. Francis was born in wealth, extreme wealth, and at a, at a young age, he decided that it was better to live in creation, in the environment with animals than to live in an opulent mansion. And so he opted to become a Catholic priest. And we have um, from St. Francis, the Franciscan order, uh, which our, our current Pope is, is a member of the Franciscan order. The Franciscans were known for their uh, care of the environment and uh, of creation. They really were the first people who um, instructed their, um, their uh, followers in the notion of creation spirituality, that God is in, look around, uh, the image of God is in everything around us that's been created, and it's beautiful. And especially our loved ones, our furry ones, some of us, we, I have a daughter-in-law who has a dragon beard, uh, a bearded dragon, and uh, they play with that thing like it's a furry thing. <laughs> but its name is Ray, and it's very special to them. Our son, David, when he was in the third grade, wanted a snake for his birthday present, so we got him a king snake, and uh, lo and behold, he got out of, in the parsonage and uh, we told him on that Easter Sunday morning, don't tell your Sunday school class that the snake got out. So he did, he told it at children's time. <laughs> um, so we had a king snake that lived under the parsonage and kept the mice away for several years. Uh, but we've had lots of experiences with animals as you have too, but, uh, but that's who St. Francis was. He was a lover of all things that were, was created by God. And so that's why even though we're United Methodists, we kind of borrowed from our Catholic tradition today. And today is his actual birthday. He was born in 1226. And so we still honor the, uh, the memory of St. Francis with this beautiful commemoration of all that God has created. Um, what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna be over here in front of this post to do the blessing. Stephen's gonna be over here in front of this post. And so just casually, you don't have to line up, just casually go from where you are and come up to us. And it's a very short blessing. Tell us the name of your beloved and we'll just do a really short blessing. And then we'll be just, it'll be dismissed after that unless you need to come and get your picture made if you haven't done that yet. But thank you so much for coming and God bless our creatures. Uh, what, what would our lives be like without our furry friends and without our blessed creatures. Can't even imagine, can we? And so we thank God every day for the gift of creation and especially the gift of our friends who are so faithful and love us so much. Um, I'll be there, Stephen will be there. Melanie, have you heard of Preacher's Kid? He can. He can. He's already chewed almost through this, so I think you're gonna be doing all the blessings. <laughs> so this is about chewed through. <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad I bought another leash last week. That's right. So. <laughs> Cody can hold it. This is my father's world. This is my father's world. And to my Oh, I know it. Let's play. How old? Two years old. Two years. Okay. 